1998 will go down as one of the greatest days in Arsenal's history. But that was only half the story, as 13 days later, the class of 98 emulated the double-winning side of 1971. Tony Adams raised the FA Cup to the Highbury faithful, ending a campaign they could only dream about at the start of the season. Welcome to boring, boring Arsenal. For the next 100 minutes, we'll bring you all the goals from the 97-98 campaign. We'll be at Wembley to see the Gunners complete their second double. Arsene Wenger, the man who masterminded the whole event, talks about the most exciting season of his career. Patrick Vieira, a man who petite take time out to reflect about life on and off the pitch at Highbury. Ray Parler describes what's driven him on to be the most improved gunner this season. We trace the journey that's taken Christopher Ray from Liberia to North London. The international stars at Highbury looked forward to France 98. There's a traditional visit to Arsenal's training camp at Coney. You can win the new home strip in our competition. And we finish by taking to the streets as 200,000 Gooners celebrate a season they'll never forget. That's up by right. Here's Parler. Taking on Robertson and getting the better of David Robertson. It's just across the face of the goal. And Wright is away. Well, how did he get that one in? A fantastic way to start the season. It's come in behind Grimondi for Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. Coventry just caught a bit napping here by the short corner. Marshall! Well, it stayed out just. Bergkamp. Coventry not off the hook yet. That's Vieira. Goalkeeper's lost it. Goal for Ian Wright. Gary Breen making his way forward as uh, Burrows takes it. Petit. Oh, and Richard Shaw has let his old Crystal Palace teammate Ian Wright in here. <laughs> Scored his first goal in the FA Carling Premiership. Roncal. Cut out by Bold. Danger not over yet. Madison! Bergkamp. Well, he's found some space to run into. And Southampton rather trailing in Bergkamp's wake! That's a very special goal indeed from a very special player. Bergkamp. Benali trying to hold him off, but he can't! Well, that could be even better than the first one. Certainly for power. Strength to get away from Benali's attempts to foul him. Brilliant Bergkamp. Arsenal's corner. Bergkamp! Well, there aren't many players in the game who can do this and make it look so ridiculously simple. Leicester paying the price for neglecting Bergkamp on the edge of the area. A pinpoint shot, 1-0 to Arsenal. Vieira. And there's a break on here. 
with Parler playing a prominent part, Vieira supporting. Bergkamp, it's opened up for him, off the goalkeeper and in. Well, Leicester. Hesitation from Seaman Heskey. Well, one thing about Leicester City under Martin O'Neill is they never give up. And this is Matt Elliott deflected beyond the reach of Seaman. Vieira. Well, both sets of supporters not knowing quite what to feel. Still life in the game, according to the referee, and Bergkamp certainly life in him. A truly high-class hat-trick from Dennis Bergkamp. The first touch was magnificent. More to come. And again, unerring in front of goal. Back heel by Overmars, Bergkamp into the Tottenham wall. Winterbird. Overmars! Underside of the bar, back into play, Parler's there. Somehow Spurs survive. Well, Scales got to it, twice. Petit, Parler, and Ian Wright is in here! It's the bar again. Well, you'd have backed Ian Wright, but this time you'd have lost your money. Winterburn forward once more. Well, it was Clements who just got a touch. Dixon and Nelka. Clements getting it back but not getting it away. Platt, right! So a steady and unbeaten start for the Gunners, but it was Man United and Blackburn who were setting the early pace at the end of August. Blake. Good support from Bolton in the centre, and Thompson! The first goal Arsenal have conceded at Highbury this season. But is equalled. In typically explosive fashion. So... How long before the record is entirely his and he beats Bastard? Bergkamp. Arsenal's all-time greatest goal scorer. 179 goals for the club. Six years of scintillating service here. And when the goal came... Probably the easiest of the lot. Well, it's hard to think about the game. At the moment, they're thinking about the man. Bergkamp. Parler. A deflection! No chance for Brannigan. Ray Parler will claim the goal. This is Platt. Right! It's a hat trick. Well, this rounds off perfectly a wonderful day in the life of Ian Wright. Arsene Wenger is going to make the change and happiness personified. Wright goes off to an ovation all round Highbury. It's a bullion character.
Everyone wants to shake his hand. Brilliant. The Arsenal fans were very excited about it and I was pleased. You know, I think they're just as relieved as I am, you know, because, you know, every, everywhere I was going on the street, people were saying, are you going to do it this week? Are you going to do it? And I, I really, you know, if I was going to say anything that's playing on my mind, I would have liked to have done it here at Highbury. You know, we've had some fantastic times. The fans have been great to me from from day one. I know everybody's heard it all before, but I have to say, you know, um, they've been fantastic. And I think they even sucked the goals in for me today, you know. It's brilliant. <laughs>
It's Mark over Mars. 4 0. And West Ham have absolutely no answer. Right. Bergkamp. Off. Was over Mars. Anticipating the pass. Staying onside. Drawing McClosko and scoring. Well won by Parler. Bergkamp. Speed chasing him. It's Ian Wright who's got the drop on Watson. Wright's eighth goal of the season. Petit. From Wright for Overmars. Two for Arsenal. Paul Gerrard beats the turf in frustration. Ball up for Arsenal, number 11, Mark Overmars. Feel it. On by Oster, in came Stewart, and ball! One back for Everton. Oh, well, Graham Stewart, favourite here, hits it into the wall. Kadamatari hits it into the net. Great comeback by Everton. Knocked out of Europe, but their league form didn't suffer as three wins and a draw saw the Arsenal go top. One point clear. Competition time now, and in our last video, the answer was Wimbledon. And the lucky winner was Martin Carr from Hatfield in Hertfordshire. And his prize is a VIP day out for two at Highbury next season. For this video, we're offering you the chance to win the new home strip, which the first team will be wearing next season. To win it, all you have to do is name the four members of the current squad to have won three league titles with the Gunners. Send your entries to Arsenal Competition, 6 Church Studios, Camden Park Road, London NW1 9AY. Please include your daytime telephone number and good luck. Winterburn. Burkamp! Well, you start to run out of superlatives. The player of the month for August and for September, often running in October. Well, Barnsley must feel this is pretty tough. Seaman made that wonderful save from De Zeu, and then Bergkamp undermined them, and he's going to do more than that. He's got a second. Bergkamp's clear. And Parler, the goal is given. Petit's corner, but Well, he hasn't lost the knack, has he? Vieira. Winterburn having a good look. Oh, and right. Gets in on the act at last. <laughs> Steve Bruce up well. Dixon. Oh, this is Hay! And the Division One side have taken the lead through the German Tony Hay. Birmingham regrouping. Bomote! Well, it was guided in with some aplomb. And this uh, reserve strength Arsenal side are uh, level at 1 1 through Luis Bomote. Well, David Platt must be pretty grateful to get a full game tonight and extra time as well to test his fitness after so many games as a substitute in the Premiership here he comes he scores so it's going Arsenal's way Bomote 
is in the clear. Birmingham chasing the game. They've left the gap. They've been punished for it. Boa Morte involved in everything. Upson. That's a terrific pass. It's Boa Morte again. Mendes! Well, the young man, the surprise signing with the German and Spanish origins. Poor one from Mendes. Back to the league now, and it was a game of few chances at Crystal Palace. Luis Boimorte was denied a penalty when he was pulled down in the box by Mark Edworthy, but the referee failed to see the tug on his shirt. Back at Highbury, Patrick Vieira had the best chance of the game when he connected with a Dennis Burkamp free kick. He hit the crossbar, and Aston Villa left London with a point. So Arsenal was still unbeaten in the league, but those two nil-nil draws enabled Manchester United to regain the lead. In their first ever game at Pride Park, Arsenal spurned the chance to take the lead in the opening 45 minutes. Patrick Vieira was brought down by Lee Carsley, but Ian Wright couldn't find the target from the spot. Derby ran away with the game in the second half, and some uncharacteristic Arsenal defending helped to provide Paolo Wanchop with his second goal of the game. It was the Gunners' first league defeat of the season. Over Mars. Gary Neville getting back goal side and helping block. Anelka. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! Nicholas Anelka's first for the club. Adams trying to get free at the near post. Berg got ahead to it. Vieira. Oh! It flew in! Patrick Vieira! Schmeichel perhaps surprised by the shot. Certainly the pace of it, it went... Up and over him, and in off the bar. Scholes. Cole. Gary Neville. Sharing and pulling away from Grimaldi. And Manchester United have got one back. Off the head of Adams. He's done it again. who's been on the sidelines for so much of the season, is centre stage now. A perfect header. Dennis Bergkamp returned to the sign for the visit of Coventry City in the Coca-Cola Cup. Extra time was needed to settle the issue, and it was the man himself who came to the rescue. Up in South Yorkshire, Arsenal's best chance of the game fell to the head of Stephen Hughes. The return of Ron Atkinson inspired the Owls to a two-goal victory and left Arsenal to ponder their second league defeat of the season. It was back to Highbury for the visit of Lee of the campaign. The victory against Man United was the only bright spot in a month that saw the Gunners slip to fifth in the table. Oh, it's Seaman nearly threw Arsenal into trouble then. Rob Lee on the scene very quickly against Winterburn. But now it's over Mars. Bergkamp with it. Peacock going across and not quite getting there. Now Pistoni going across and Bergkamp's got the better of him in right three. 
Well, it started unpromisingly from the goalkeeper's throw-out, but Winterburn did very well. Peacock here might have done better in the defending for Newcastle. Bergkamp then got the better of Pistone, and Ian Wright with plenty to aim at. Had a hit Sherwood. Petit. Well, Overmars for the chase here. And Mark Overmars has found the net. Flowers came out this time but didn't get there. Adams doesn't play decisively. Sherwood's in there. Wilcox! Blackburn Rovers have drawn level through Jason Wilcox. Sutton getting in front of Keown that time. Gallagher taking the shot early. A really, really marvellous goal. Sherwood's not offside. It's Tim Sherwood. Siemens held him up. Sherwood tries again and scores. And Blackburn Rovers have a victory that they thoroughly deserve. That defeat against Blackburn was a turning point in Arsenal's season, and for captain Tony Adams in particular. He'd been playing games with a series of injuries and performing at a standard that he felt was letting the club down. He'd reached a point where he could carry on no longer. I actually had enough. I wasn't um, enjoying my job. And uh, obviously, as a human being, and uh, the way that I've got uh, an awareness about my body now, it's kind of. Uh, um, I, I pulled out and I said, "Look, I, I just I, I can't do it anymore. Basically, this is this is ridiculous." And uh, we come to the decision to uh, to rest it first off, and then uh, try everything basically. And uh, I went to see numerous people, and uh, with time and uh, a few bits and pieces that I did, um, finishing off in France. That was the finishing. That was basically to get me fit and to really test it, um, which I came through and uh, came back and, uh, and the pain was gone. Arsenal went to Wimbledon to get back to winning ways, but not even Mystic Meg could have predicted what was to happen. The floodlights failed and subsequently the match was abandoned to be replayed at a later date. Well, Bergkamp will take the free kick now. And a goal! And David Platt wheels away in celebration. Well, forward by Bold. Right chasing. Oh, what's happened here? That's an own goal. Steve Walsh. Well, it was... Pretty speculative from Steve Bold, and Walsh thought if he got something on the ball, he would be safe. He was wrong. Played back by Bold, and now David Seaman off on a dribble, and he's lost the ball. Is it? Getting it for Leicester, and Neil Lennon scores! To the embarrassment of David Seaman. Klinsman, Nielsen, a very well-worked goal for Spurs. Out by Vega, Tottenham trying to push out following the path of the ball. Winterberg, but they've not got close to Ray Parler, big deflection, Arsenal the level. December was another poor month as Arsenal slumped to sixth place, their lowest league position since Arsene Wenger took over.
1998 began with a visit by First Division Port Vale in the FA Cup, and they proved difficult to break down. The post denied Dennis Bergkamp a goal, so a replay was needed to settle the tie. Bergkamp. Oh, it's a wonderful goal at last. Nicely played by four, Ainsworth. And a goal for Port Vale. Wayne Corden, there's life still in the tie. So Alan Tankard now, well, he has to score. Oh, Arsenal are through by the narrowest of margins. Wright still running, and Ian Wright! Arsenal take the lead! Confusion, it's Ferdinand and Answorth, and Mark Overmars cashes in on some sloppy defensive play from West Ham. Now Arsenal have to turn, and it's Samasi Abu who gets a foot to the ball and pulls the goal back for the Hammers. Overmars was trying to play it wide of Petit and hit it straight at him, but Petit reacted well and Overmars still thinking he's got right to use, but he goes for goal! Mark Overmars! Yes, it's better from Leeds and Wallace. Still Rod Wallace. Arsenal struggling here and Jimmy Floyd Hasselback. 1-1. Good pressure by Winterburn, and fair enough in the mind of the referee. Bergkamp. Supported here by Overmars, he's away again. Overmars in again. Overmars scores again. Dublin, that's a delightful pass. Saltfeck getting a head of the ball from midfield, and... It's Noel Whelan who beats Dion Dublin to the punch, 1-0 to Coventry. Williams has been outguessed at Fox by Bergkamp, and Arsenal have pinched an equaliser. Well, Arsenal would have been delighted after the first half to be level, and now they're looking for more with Bergkamp. And there might be more here, Anelka! Oh, that's handball! Patrick Vieira jumped with an arm raised. It's got to be a penalty. And Vieira's in trouble. Well, as we look at the replay here, and it will show again how clear the handball was there. Vieira still arguing with Steve Lodge, who was booked earlier. Well, that's a straight red card. He must have said something out of turn. So, Dion Dublin, about whom there's been so much talk this week and his wage demands, he's got to show his value for money here against David Seaman. Dublin scores, 2-2. Rimondi taking the free kick. Bowled in quickly. Oh, there's no flag. Bergkamp caught Southampton's back line out and then made the finish look very, very simple indeed. Oh, the big gunners uh, forward at the corner. And it's Adams who got the telling touch. 2-0. by Moncal. Well, a delightful flick by Overmars and it's Bergkamp and Elka by the far post! Arsenal have really come good now. Two wins.
wins and a draw saw Arsenal climb one place and close the gap on leaders Man United to eight points. The Stade de France on the banks of the River Seine will be the centre point of this summer's World Cup. We spoke to some of the international stars at Highbury who hope to play a part in the greatest sporting event in the world. I was involved in 1990 uh, in Italy um, and I came on then through injury. But um, I just can't wait to get out of there. You know, there's a few things to, you know, <laughs> to put to bed first, and uh, and then we'll start thinking about that. It's the biggest tournament in the world. Uh, you know, if you, if you, I hope we're doing well with Holland, and and we can play uh, a good tournament, and just play good football. Ourselves, Italy, Spain, Germany, and Brazil. I think that the teams are going to contest it and we've got to be right up there because they're just as afraid of us as we are of them. The French player want to win the World Cup, you know, because France never wins the World Cup and this uh, year is in France. You have uh, the very good team and I think so we have the chance to win the World Cup. We've got a lot of qualities and, and we're two years older now, more experienced. Uh, I think we, when we can be mentally very strong, I think we we got a lot enough quality to to go a long way, but uh, it all depends on the f what we can do in the first three games. I think if you go out with a negative attitude, say no, oh, maybe we do the semi, maybe quarter final, you, you might as well not go. As, as far as I'm concerned, um, if selected, obviously, um, I'll be trying to win it. Um, I don't see any other way. Um, that's me. If you go to a World Cup campaign. You're away for a long time and you do need na natural, enthusiastic, bubbly people and I just fall into that category maybe. But like I want to go there and play a part on the football pitch, you know, and if I'm not needed, you know, then it would be a great, a great break for me and hopefully come back with a winner's medal. Can you imagine the season it would be? Unbelievable. It'd be the great. I think it could be the greatest season ever for one person to have. Given the difficulties Arsenal experience with Port Vale in the third round. They're determined to make a sharper start here. And here's Overmars with an early chance, which he's taken. Townsend. Arsenal happy to get it forward. And when you've got the pace of players like Anelka... That's a wise philosophy. Look at the support. It's Ray Parler on the run. And a really rampaging start at the Riverside from Arsenal. Arsenal's pass. Now Merson. Oh, Maniga has committed himself. It's Paul Merson. A goal of great personal satisfaction and of great value to his team. support. Back up! Oh, against the bar! Oh, well, it's misjudged that, and Overmars has read it splendidly. 1-0 to Arsenal. Overmars, and the sense of expectation around the crowd, and he's in possession, and you can understand why it's Overmars again. Cut back for Hughes! And well, it's run up to Chabé. Zola's so there as well, still Chabé. Comes back to Zola. And the cross deflected! And Mark Hughes has got one back for Chelsea. Drops towards the alley, he lets it go to Di Matteo! Well, that was brilliantly taken on the spin, it's Mark Hughes again. What a goal! Di Matteo! So, let's go. 
Petrescu. Still Petrescu. It's Chelsea's night. It's Wembley for Chelsea. Last man up to lying down. Burkett. Now. Was that a handball? It was. Graham Paul has given the penalty against Michael Dubery. a mistake by the bath in goes Anelka great stop by the hoey still Anelka still Arsenal goal Stephen Hughes Bergkamp to take the free kick Arsenal very much the dominant force Adams and Stephen Hughes has got another This is Grimaldi. Oh, the goal! It's his first in English football. Arsenal will take the lead in truth from an unlikely source. Gilles Grimaldi. Two wins out of two took Arsenal to third place, 12 points behind the leaders, but the Gunners had three games in hand. George Armstrong's reserve side finished the season well in third place. Charlton were the runaway winners, and the old enemy pipped the Gunners to second place. By winning the southern section of the Premier Youth League, Arsenal progressed to play Spurs in the playoff final. Omar Itza scored the second goal in a 2 0 victory. Although Spurs won the return at Highbury by a single goal, it wasn't enough to stop captain Paolo Vanazza stepping up to receive the trophy. Arsenal's ladies finished runners-up in the league, but won the Women's National League Cup by beating Croydon 4-2 on penalties. And Croydon were the opponents again in the Women's FA Cup final. Kelly Few scored the vital goal in a 3-2 victory. Delia Smith was on hand to present the trophy to the proud captain, Sean Williams. An Arsenal team do the double. Now that sounds familiar. The main talking points in this game were the two penalties that weren't given. Jamie Fullerton claimed he was fouled inside the area, but the referee awarded a free kick. And when Stephen Hughes was bundled over in the box, a goal kick was the result. Nicely down by Platt to Bergkamp. Platt's there again if required. Bergkamp has other ideas, and it's come on through for Nicholas Anelka. Off the post and in. An early lead for Arsenal. Well, now Palace have to regroup without Dean Gordon and get this wall set. Bergkamp deflected. The unlucky player was Mark Edworthy, and it's 2 0 to Arsenal. Ryderson, somehow Manigas kept it out, or has he? It? It's a goal for Palace, and I think Dyer got the final touch. Berkovic and uh, Lampard just debating uh, policy at the corner. And it's come for Ian Pearce! First blood to West Ham. Pierce trying to turn. Oh, he's caught. Martin killed. That's got to be a penalty. So this for 1 1. Bergkamp. 1 1 it is. Well, Bergkamp's lashed out there. Right in front of the referee. He's caught. 
Lomas in the face with a wave of the stiff arm, maybe an elbow, and Bergkamp is sent off. Lomas just trying to pull him back, but you just can't do that. Forward from Winterberg. Over Mars. Vieira. And Nalka! Oh, that's a great goal! And the team with ten men have taken the lead. And Hartson. And this is a little better from West Ham. Hartson trying to take on Martin Keogh. And still John Hartson! Selassie Abu has to score to keep the shootout going, to keep West Ham and the FA Cup. Yeah! They're out! Arsenal, the double, it's still alive! When you hit a player with your own, um, the moment after you regret it. So th that's, yeah, that's finished then. I mean, you know the consequences. You have to take them and uh, you have to live with that. And when you're on the side, through suspension or, or, or through injury or whatsoever. When, when you don't play, it's, it's very hard to, to watch the games because you, you get more nervous, you can't, you can't be a part of the game. You see a lot of things that uh, you could do, but yeah, you can't really uh, act through it, to it because you're, you're not there. And that's, uh, that's disappointing and uh, it's not good for your nerves.